I'm René Bernard. I'm at the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam. Uh, my name is Dieter Brune and I'm a PhD student in the lab of René uh, and I'm the first author on the paper uh, Intrinsic Resistance to PIM Kinase uh, Inhibition in AML through um, P4Data Alpha Mediated Feedback Activation of mTOR Signaling. Um, we are very honored that our paper is uh, uh, the cover article of OncoTarget. So the general um, interest of my lab is to find uh, what we call synthetic lethal drug combinations. We know that single agent um, cancer drugs are often not very effective and that combinations are often far more effective than single agents. But then the question of course immediately comes up, so which of the many possible drug combinations should be tested? And in my lab, we like to use an unbiased genetic approach where we ask through genetic screens whether any of the some 580 kinases in the human genome are en uh, enhancing the effect of a certain kinase inhibitor drug. And the most uh, notable example from that in my lab is the finding that if you inhibit BRAF with the selective BRAF inhibitor Vemurafenib in BRAF mutant colon cancer, that you do not get a significant inhibition of proliferation. But through a genetic screen, we found that you need to co-inhibit EGFR and that BRAF plus EGFR is a very effective cocktail in treating BRAF mutant colon cancer. And in fact, that was published and discovered in 2012 in my lab, and right now there's a registration phase three trial ongoing with this specific combination of BRAF and EGFR inhibitors in uh, BRAF mutant colon cancer. So this can go quickly from discovery to clinical application. And now Dida will explain how we apply the same thinking uh, through acute myelocytic leukemia. So yeah, we, we actually got interested into PIM kinases because they are highly expressed in hematological malignancies like AML and lymphoma. Um, there are several clinical trials at the moment going on with small molecule inhibitors. But when we tested these inhibitors in the lab in AML cell lines, we could already see that a lot of these cells were intrinsically resistant. And of course, that is also what we expect to see in patients. So we thought it would be a good idea to perform a screen and to identify genes that upon loss are synthetically lethal with PIM inhibition. So that's what we did, and the hit that came out of our screen was P38 alpha, or MEP kinase 14. So we found that if you inhibit P38, um, you can now make the cell sensitive to PIM inhibitor treatment. So how does this work? Well, if you give PIM inhibitors to these resistant cell lines, they increase their reactive oxygen species levels, and this then activates P38 signaling and also downstream AKT and mTOR signaling, and this is responsible for the resistance. So if you then combine the two, um, you're now able to inhibit growth. And we did the same in um, patient cells by isolating cells from patients, growing them ex vivo, and also treating them with a combination of a P38 and a PIM inhibitor. And you can also see that you're able to uh, suppress growth in a synergistic manner. Um, this is actually also confirming the results of others that have shown before that PIM and AKT inhibitors are synergistic. Um, this is also what we see. And I think that um, we provide a mechanism um, by showing that this P38 signaling is involved in the activation of AKT and mTOR, uh, and that you therefore can combine either PIM and P38 inhibitors or PIM and AKT inhibitors um, as a combination that might be more beneficial than just giving PIM inhibitors as a monotherapy. I think what you see is a recurring theme in these uh, studies is that when you expect a response and you don't see it, uh, because the drug is ineffective, just like we saw in the BRI foot and colon cancer, and, and Dida now also saw again in uh, AMLs that express high levels of PIM, you inhibit the PIM kinases, nothing happens. It's often the result of a feedback loop. When you inhibit the PIM kinases, you reactivate a secondary pathway that now rescues the growth of the cells while the PIM kinases are inhibited. And through these genetic screens, you learn who the feedback pathway is, and if you then inhibit that as well, then you get the clinical benefit, or at least a preclinical benefit in this case, uh, that we uh, that we had hoped for, and therefore this is a very uh, suitable general approach to enhance the efficacy of any drug. You can always look for combinations that are more efficacious 
than the single agents by doing these combination genetic screens. So this, I think, holds great promise to, in an unbiased fashion, discover which are the best combinations for any drug that you wish to use in any specific disease indication. And that, I think, is the importance of this work.